everyone, I'm hiding underneath the swing. If you look closely enough, you can see part of one of my children poking down there, hanging down. That's my hair. It is your hair. We're about to head off on our nature exploration, so I thought I'd stop first to have a little chat about this week because it's an exciting week in the Exploring Nature with Children curriculum. It's the summer solstice. So however you celebrate that, whether you think about it in a scientific way or whether you think about it in a spiritual way, it is still a really significant turning point in the year. So we've been looking at nature in a very micro way, kind of, not microwave, <laughs> micro way, where we're zooming really closely into things and looking at the different parts of an ant or looking at the tiny pot bits of pollen that have stuck to a bee's leg. There are lots of tiny things to look at in nature, but today we're thinking about the macro level of nature studies, zooming right out and looking at the big picture as if we're out of space looking down and seeing how hi, seeing how earth and the sun interact together and how they move. So we're going to play a game in a moment that talks about some of the ways that the earth moves. So get ready for that. It does involve a bit of moving, but if you need to, you can stay sitting in your seat and do it. But we'll be moving around a bit so I can get some of the wiggles out of these children. This game is really simple. I'm going to shout out a way of moving wow. and we have to move that way. But if I say the word solstice, which means sun standing still, you have to freeze. Okay, so if I say tilt, what do we have to do, Ezra? Tilt. Tilt, yep, because the earth tilts on its axis. If I say spin, you're going to have to move a little bit this way. If I say spin, because the earth spins on its axis as it goes round and it orbits the sun. So when I say orbit, you need to do this. And if I say solstice, freeze. Orbit. Tilt. Orbit. Spin. Spin. Tilt. Orbit. Uh, which one's orbit? This one. Tilt. Solstice. as much as you want at home you can do it sitting down and just use your arms did you enjoy that no okay <laughs> So we start our nature workshops by communicating with each other and usually I give you three questions. This week it's just going to be two because they've kind of got a few different parts to them. Before we do that I want us to just think about three words. Help, hinder and harm. Help is pretty straightforward. They're helping each other build a ring of rocks over there. Hinder is when you get in the way of something happening and harm is when you do something that hurts someone directly. So we've got helping, hindering and harming. So keep those words in mind as I talk about these questions. The first question then is about the sun, obviously, because it's summer solstice week. So the sun obviously is the source of life and the source of so much on earth. But I want you to think about ways that the sun helps hinders or harms you as a person. Okay, don't just think of the obvious ones like, oh, sometimes I get sunburned, even though that is an important one. Try and think a little bit outside the box. It won't let just the sun help you, 
it might be emotions it might be something that it gives your body in what ways can the sun hinder you and in what ways can the sun harm us have a think a chat about that does everyone in your family feel the same maybe there might be some things that hinder somebody that actually help somebody else so our first question was about the sun but this next question is about the celebrations people have around the sun and summer solstice different groups different places different religions and beliefs will celebrate summer solstice in very different ways going back to those three words help hinder and harm I want to think about the ways that we learn about those celebrations or maybe join in or use some of those celebrations. Are there any ways that we can celebrate the way that other cultures and other people do in a way that helps them? Are there any ways that we can do it that might hinder them? Are there any ways that we can take some of those celebrations and harm those people groups? What do you think? How can we celebrate in a way that helps and do we ever do it in a way that hinders or harms other people? This is the time in our nature workshop where we think about connecting with nature. It could be on a nature walk like we're doing. It could be just going about your day-to-day -day life. We're going to give you a challenge to think about the world around you and connect with it in different ways. Before we do that, we found some things that gave us some ideas for our challenge that are nothing to do with nature at all. What did you find? A piece of metal in nature. So do we think this is naturally occurring metal? Because metal does come from the ground, doesn't it? Really? From rocks, yeah. yeah. But, but this doesn't look like that, does it? No, it does not. It's been shaped. And to do the, a certain job. And there's a hole in the top. Yeah, maybe from a screw or something. Yeah. Or maybe it's an ancient crown. Oh, I like that. I don't know what it was, but it's definitely human one? made. Ah. And no. I found a brick. I found a few of these about because there used to be buildings in this wood, in these woods. So maybe that's where our artifacts are from. When we picked this up, we found a lot of beetles, a ginormous beetle underneath actually. But it made me think about the sun strangely because the sun changes things. And hundreds of years ago, maybe thousands of years ago, they used to make bricks by packing the clay and shaping it in the, to the right shape that they would want and they would put it out into the sun to bake and the sun would harden and it would evaporate off all the liquid and it would harden those bricks so that they could be used for building. The sun changes things. So the first thing I'd like you to observe for your challenge this week, our 3 two, one challenge, I want you to spot three things that the sun has changed. It could be things, it could be people, it could be items in nature, living things. So three things that the sun has changed. And then I want you to think about two ways of celebrating. So as you're out, it could just be a moment of saying thank, thank you and have been thankful for the world around us. It could be something big like throwing a big party. We're going to get the strobe light out tonight in our house and we're going to have um, a sun party inside our house tonight with lots of lights so it could be that anywhere you want two ways to celebrate and then remember solstice means that the sun standing still that's the sound of a train going past not still at all so i'll have to speak a bit louder one moment of stillness i'd like you to find one moment of stillness it could be something you see that's very still it could be you being very still like this so Three things that the sun has changed, two ways of celebrating, and one moment of stillness. Are you ready? Three, two, one, let's go.
it's time for creating now the first thing that we did is we made a collage as we were learning about the solstice and then we turned those into sun sticks so that we could have a parade around our home and then we've put them inside our house to brighten it up this week we also wanted to think about mud and could we use the power of the sun to unmix mud and evaporate off the water. So created some special artwork using things that we found in nature and then we left it to dry to see what happens. The next thing we did was make a solar oven. My children love doing this. We followed some instructions from Twinkle and then left out some food to bake in the sun. We didn't have any biscuits, so we ended up using crackers with chocolate on the top. My kids thought it tasted delicious, though. So have fun making at home this week. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope you find some unexpected treasures on your nature exploration. And we'll see you next week. Happy exploring!